Hey, welcome back to the second part of our video on TS Compiler API. The last part ended a bit abruptly and I think it went on for too long. So I'll try not to make the same mistakes this time. Uh, so just to recap our last video, we saw what a AST is, a uh, different kind of AST nodes and also wrote a simple code on how to log all the variable names in our AST. This time we'll see how to change our existing code. So till now we are reading some property out of the existing node which is our variable names. But how can we add something to our code? So something like adding a node or modifying our existing node. So let's get started. So the first thing to notice is that the visitor function that we used last time, so we only took a, took a node as input and returned the same node as output. But we can do more here. So if you notice the type signature, a visitor can return either a single node or an array of nodes. right? So I think this looks interesting. So instead of just taking one node as input and giving the same one or a different one as output, I could now return multiple nodes as, as output. So let's try something with that, right? So because we can return an array of nodes, what happens if I just return the same node twice? So let's get to the code. If you remove the structure, it looks like this. Uh, we do a check on the type of node and if it matches what you want, then we return something else, okay? So in this case, if you get an expression statement, then we return it twice. So all those statements should get just duplicated in the output. Let's see if that works or not. I'll just refresh this. So yeah, so this shows the diff here. So you can see that a equal to 2, 1 is the last line and it was an expression statement. So it got duplicated. Uh, same thing here also. So that's nice. We are able to duplicate some nodes, but if we are able to return multiple nodes, can we create some node instead? Can we generate some code here instead of just duplicating the code? Let's see how to do that. So we are returning node comma node, but what if we create a node here? So let's say we have this create helper methods. So I could do something like create string literal because that one is easy and just put hello. So now after every expression statement, we'll just have a statement saying hello. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you notice here, now the animation part is working and it shows that these two elements were inserted here called string literal. In fact, if we go back to the last example, I just undo the change. So when you are returning node twice, notice that the output was correct, but the animation here didn't kick in, right? It is not able to show that this expression statement got duplicated twice. Same for this one. So the reason is how this was created in React. Uh, it uses the key props and the key props actually depends on this object node. But if you are returning the same node twice, uh, it's getting the same key prop twice, which means that React is skipping the render of the next node. So what you can do is, instead of returning the same node, what if we can create and return a copy of the same node? So you can do ts dot get mutable clone, and that creates a shallow copy of the node. In this case, a shallow copy means that the node and its own values will be duplicated but the child elements will, within node will be reused from the last one okay so let's see how that works i'll save these and go back here so now if you note notice the animation here is showing that okay we have two extra ast nodes but the output is still the same so this is just a way to get a shallow copy so now if you think of it because we can return an array of nodes, what it actually means is that we can add a sibling node to any existing node. So in fact, if you just change this order of two nodes, right, a new node can get inserted above or below your existing code. So this is how you add a sibling node.
okay so similar to what we saw as ts.create uh, string literals you also have ts.create apis for everything so you could also create a function call at runtime right you could add that node uh, dynamically here so this is a way to generate some code uh, in your output okay so now we know that okay how to generate some code in our output now let's think about how to update our existing code okay so i'll get back to the slide and we'll see an example of what we can do so let's think about assignment expressions so what we'll try to do is look at a few kind of assignment expressions and think if we can swap both sides of assignment expression will that be valid uh, thing to do so here we have a equal to b now this one looks simple in terms of ast both sides are just identifiers and in between it's an equal symbol so i could just swap it and write it as b equal to a that should be valid now let's look at a second example so we have b equal to a plus c now how it looks is that the left hand side is a identifier which is expected but the right hand side now in itself is another expression so if you look at it the expression statement here is the whole one and that says that okay it's a binary expression and the right hand side of that binary expression is again another binary expression so this one looks like something uh, that we can't really swap so I can't really write a plus c equal to b that wouldn't be a valid thing to do because in the assignment expression your left hand side should never be an expression the left hand side should always be a identifier a variable name because you can only assign to a variable right so we should somehow skip this kind of nodes because if we swap the sides of this that would be an invalid ast and in fact we'll see that typescript gives us uh, errors for that and the last example is a bit more complicated so in assignment expressions you can also chain them like this so i've written a equal to b equal to c and again in terms of ast how it looks is that the whole thing is assignment expression whose right hand side is again another assignment expression in which both of them are simple identifiers right so if you think of the smaller assignment expression it's valid to swap both sides of this so we could have written c equal to b here but for the bigger expression we couldn't do that because we can't assign anything to b equal to c so now that we have some criteria to decide when to swap this assignment expressions let's look at how to actually um, you know implement that criteria and update these assignment expressions so I'll get to the next file okay so first we want to filter it down to assignment expressions so we check that if it's a binary expression and if the operator in between is equals then we at least know that it's an assignment expression but like we saw it's not valid to swap every assignment expression so for that both sides of it should be identified so that after the swap your left hand side also becomes identifier so this is what we are doing here we are checking that both node.left and right should be identifier this is our precondition this tells us that okay it's safe to swap now and then we just do a ts.update binary so just like we have seen some create utilities there are some update utilities here so you can do update binary give it the existing node and pass some new right and left so this is actually the opposite order uh, so the actual order is left comma right but because you want to swap it i have passed it in the opposite order right comma left now if we look at what the output is so if the input is like a equal to b then it becomes b equal to a and if the input is like a equal to b equal to c then it becomes the opposite one right like we discussed in fact let's change the input code to show the example where it shouldn't swap so if you have a equal to b plus c 
let's look at what happens here so in this case a equal to b becomes b equal to a but this one is unchanged at all and in terms of the ast change this is all we are doing we are removing one expression statement and inserting another one instead so technically we are changing just the binary expression within it but uh, yeah this one doesn't show the diff so correctly so it actually shows whichever parent node changed but actually what we are doing is updating this binary expression with a new one so now we know how to modify our AST so we talked a lot about doing things in a safe way right we are always considering what kind of transformation we are doing before doing it uh, so let's see what happens when we try to do some kind of a invalid transformation okay so remember the previous example where instead of one node we are returning two nodes now one thing we sort of skipped there is that we are only doing it for expression statements now it seems fine to do it for any kind of statement because instead of one statement you can always put another one right but what if it if uh, you know what if it happens that you try to return two nodes for any expression so let's say for identifier variable names right if you have a equal to 1 what happens if you try to return two a's instead of one a should it even work because logically i can't think of uh, any code which would uh, actually represent that AST right will TypeScript give us some kind of an error let's check it out so instead of checking for expression statements I'll just check for identifier and in the input code let's make it a bit easier we'll do it only for one line let a equal to 1 and it should try to, re to return two a's instead of one a here and we'll see if it works or not so I went back to the code and yeah it looks like TypeScript gives us something like debug failure false expression too many nodes written to output so what it is basically saying is that instead of one identifier you have returned me two I don't know what to do with that many nodes in that place right so this is the sort of error you get when um, you try to return multiple nodes now this is one particular error but maybe if you return some different uh, invalid AST it will give you different kind of errors but TypeScript usually has these uh, validation checks but it will check uh, that if your AST makes sense or not before trying to uh, accept it or before you know, stringifying it to some code the last thing I wanted to cover are some of the resources related to TypeScript internals so if you like some of the things that we are doing earlier this will help you get started yourself so I made this small website called typescript.tools if you go there it's just a list of links the first thing that you'll probably want to see is the AST viewer so this is what we are seeing in the initial part of the video where I was giving some code on the left and it shows the AST on the middle and the right pane this will help you get an idea of what common code structures look like in AST now that you have an idea of how AST looks like you'll probably want to get started with the basics so Microsoft official documentation has a architecture overview this shows you what all TypeScript compiler API contains and which all parts are used by which programs like what does the editor use what does the CLI use so this gives you an idea of what all parts are there so that you can remember and use them when necessary so this is only a theoretical guide so it has another page on practical code examples where it imports all of these specific APIs and uses them to build some demo application so for example how to write a small transformer how to get started with writing a TypeScript linter things like that this is uh, still like small examples but it gives you the initial code to get started now that you have an overall idea there is this great link called TypeScript transformer handbook it's like a very exhaustive li list of uh, things that you can do with a transformer so this is like a pa parallel to Babel transformer handbook so it will show you things like what we are doing so how do you modify a node how do you add a node delete a node or even interesting things like how to find scope of a variable how to move a variable declaration above and even 
other things like how to test a transformer that you have just written. So this is like a very exhaustive link and uh, please try to contribute to this one. It is still growing. So all of this was related to still TypeScript running on node or on a server. But this is a great page someone built on glitch called TypeScript API Playground. This shows you a lot of examples of how to use the TSC API on the browser. So for example, the web app we are seeing to see the transformation, right? To see the animation of how it moved from one AST to another AST. I started that by using the examples from this website. So it will show you things like how to create a source file from just a string because on the browser you don't have access to the file system, which is typically how TSC API expects. But you can also create it dynamically on the browser. So this is like super interesting. And the last thing is that the TypeScript TSC CLI doesn't accept a transformer function as params or as arguments. So there is a drop-in replacement called TTypeScript. So if you just want to test out a small transformer, you'll probably use this one and pass the transformer as an input. Okay. So hopefully some of the links get give you some idea to you know get started with this and hopefully you learn how to you know build better tools using the TypeScript compiler API. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for listening and this is the end of this video.